मैं प्रोफेसर नरेंद्र कुमार पांडे फिजिक्स डिपार्टमेंट लखनऊ यूनिवर्सिटी से आज मैं अपने लेक्चर जो कि मैं लेजर्स के ऊपर में मैंने सीरीज शुरू की थी उस सीरीज का आठवां लेक्चर मैं डिलीवर करने जा रहा हूं और मैं आप सबका अपने इस लेक्चर में स्वागत करता हूं आज के इस लेक्चर का टॉपिक है नेचुरल और लाइफ टाइम लाइन ब्रॉडनिंग मैकेनिज्म जो लेजर में जहां हमें हम उम्मीद करते हैं कि हमें बिल्कुल ही मोनोक्रोमेटिक बीम मिलना चाहिए वहां पर बीम हमें मोनोक्रोमेटिक नहीं मिलता है बल्कि ओमेगा में सर्टेन विड्थ होता है तो ये जो विड्थ होता है ये वेरियस लाइन ब्रॉडनिंग मैकेनिज्म के कारण होता है तो हम एक एक करके इन सभी लाइन ब्रॉडनिंग मैकेनिज्म को डील करेंगे उसके बारे में चर्चा करेंगे और आज जिस टॉपिक पर हम चर्चा करने जा रहे हैं वो एक बार फिर मैं बताऊं वो है नेचुरल और लाइफ टाइम लाइन ब्रॉडनिंग मैकेनिज्म लाइन ब्रॉडनिंग मैकेनिज्म बेसिकली दो तरह के होते हैं एक होमोजीनस लाइन ब्रॉडनिंग और एक होता है इन होमोजीनस लाइन ब्रॉडनिंग होमोजीनस लाइन ब्रॉडनिंग की कैटेगरी में दो तरह के लाइन ब्रॉडनिंग होते हैं एक नेचुरल लाइन ब्रॉडनिंग और दूसरा कोलिजन लाइन ब्रॉडनिंग जबकि इन होमोजीनस लाइन ब्रॉडनिंग की कैटेगरी में एक है वो है डॉपलर लाइन ब्रॉडनिंग द ब्रॉडनिंग ऑफ द लाइन ड्यू टू वेरियस फैक्टर्स इज डिस्क्राइब इन टर्म्स ऑफ द लाइन शेप फंक्शन जैसा कि हम लोग लाइन शेप फंक्शन के बारे में पहले बात कर चुके हैं तो जितनी भी ब्रॉडनिंग होती है या जितने भी लाइन ब्रॉडनिंग मैकेनिज्म होते हैं उन सब को फाइनली हम बात करते हैं लाइन शेप फंक्शन के बारे में तो फाइनली किसी भी ब्रॉडनिंग का जो फाइनल रिजल्ट निकल करके आएगा वो उसका लाइन शेप फंक्शन ही होगा जो कि हम आगे देखेंगे होमोजीनस लाइन ब्रॉडनिंग कंसिडर अ कलेक्शन ऑफ एटम्स इन गैस एमिटिंग इन गैस दैट इज एमिटिंग लाइट द गैस इज होमोजीनसली ब्रॉडेंट द गैस इज होमोजीनसली ब्रॉडेंट If all the atoms in the gas are broadened in the same way, in other words, the emission spectrum of each atom is the same, with the same central frequency and line width. As a result, the overall broad broadening of the gas is the same as the broadening of a, it, each atom. For a gas composed of a single species of atoms, all subjected to same environmental conditions. one would expect that natural or lifetime and collision broadening mechanisms would result in homogeneous broadening now jaisa ki hum logo ne dekha ki jab atoms ke surroundings identical honge har tarah har ek atom ke to har ek atom ka emission spectrum similar hoga aur isliye jo hamara overall spectrum jo hoga वो बिल्कुल इंडिविजुअल एटम के स्पेक्ट्रम से मैच करेगा जबकि इन होमोजीनस ब्रॉडनिंग में ये केस नहीं है इसमें हर एटम का जो सराउंडिंग होता है वो डिफरेंट होता है इसके कारण सारे के सारे एटम्स का जो एमिशन स्पेक्ट्रम होता है उसकी सेंट्रल फ्रीक्वेंसी अपनी होती है जैसे ये एक एटम का है ये दूसरे एटम का ये तीसरे एटम का ये चौथे एटम का इस तरह से हर एक एटम का जो एमिशन स्पेक्ट्रम है वो सारे के सेंट्रल फ्रीक्वेंसी अलग होती है और ओवरऑल स्पेक्ट्रम ऑफ द सिस्टम जो हम लेते हैं इन सब के के ब्रॉडनिंग के कारण एडिशन से ये बन पाता है सो इन होमोजीनस ब्रॉडनिंग क्या है इफ डिफरेंट लाइट एमिटर्स इन अ गैस हैव डिफरेंट स्पेक्ट्रम दैट इज दे हैव देयर ओन डिफरेंट सेंट्रल फ्रीक्वेंसी एंड और लाइन विड the overall spectrum of the collection of emitter atoms is thus a sum of the varied spectra of the individual emitters a gas with doppler broadening as the dominant mechanism will be in homogeneously broadened each atom would effectively have a different central frequency dependent upon each its own velocity so homogeneous line broadening mechanism acts to broaden the response of each atom in an individual fashion the probability of absorption or emission of radiation of a certain frequency is the same for all atoms in the collection whereas in the case of inhomogeneous broadening 
different groups of atoms are distinguished by different frequency responses. That is what we have gathered till now. Now, in the, the line shear functions that we get in the broadening mechanism will either be a Lorentzian function or it will be a Gaussian function. Which function is associated with what kind of line broadening mechanism that we will see in this lecture and subsequent lectures also. So, how do we define a long rate? Lorentzian function. A Lorentzian line shape function is represented by an expression of this type. Here, L is the standardized Lorentzian function and its maximum value can be up to 1. L is equal to 1 by 1 plus omega minus omega naught by omega d by 2 whole square. Omega naught represents the position of the maximum corresponding to the transition energy E. Omega is the any position of the frequency and omega d is the full width at half maximum FWHM. The width of the curve when the intensity is half the maximum intensity. And this will occur at points omega d is equal to central frequency omega naught plus minus omega, do, uh, omega d upon 2. The units of omega naught, omega and omega d are is typically wave number or frequency. The very <coughs> now the Second is the Gaussian function. The standard form of Gaussian function is written as g is equal to e to the power of minus log 2 omega minus omega naught by omega d by 2 whole square. Now, here, of course, uh, we can define it with, by a subsidiary x where x could be written as omega minus omega naught by omega d by 2 whole square, whether in the Lorentzian function or in the Gaussian function. So, both the Gaussian function and the Lorentzian function have a maximum value of 1 at x is equal to 0 and half at x is equal to plus minus 1. So here is a figure that shows intensity versus omega minus omega naught by omega d by 2 graph. And it represents both the Gaussian and the Lorentzian functions. In this particular figure, especially the FWHM has been shown to be the same. So we can understand the difference between a, uh, the plot of a Gaussian or a Lorentzian function. Now let us focus now on natural or lifetime line broadening. Now let us see. The quantum mechanics suggests that the electron wave function is oscillating at a frequency given by nu is equal to E upon H. Here, E is the energy of the state that the electron occupies. A wave can have a single frequency if it oscillates indefinitely. That is, for all the time to come. That is, indefinitely means time is infinite. However, an electron in an energy state has a finite lifetime in that state. Hence, the electron will move to another state by spontaneous or some other process. Thus, each state has a finite lifetime. Let us call it tau. The finite duration of the wave function's oscillation introduces additional frequency or energy we can say. Just now we will see this. Components to the electron's wave function thereby broadening its spectrum. This form of broadening can't be unavoidable. This, this is the natural lifetime broadening or lifetime broadening and this is the minimum that one has to bear with. This is unavoidable. Nevertheless, the process produces only a narrow broadening in practice as many states have very long lifetime compared to their oscillation frequency. Now, let us focus on the uncertainty principle that is delta E delta T greater than equal to H plus. Or jaisa ki abhi humne thodi dir pehle dekha ki generally ek jo humara electron ka wave function hai wo ek hi state mein undisturbed infinite indefinitely wo reh sakta hai. Yani agar delta T infinite ho jata hai to delta E is uncertainty principle se zero ho jata hai. Yani कोई भी the electron का wave function अपने किसी energy state में जितना ज़्यादा समय तक रहेगा उतना ही line broadening उसका कम होगा because delta e is greater than equal to h cross by delta t और अगर देखिए प्राय ऐसा होता है कि electron कुछ ही समय तक अपने एक state में रहते हैं उसके बाद वो transition करते हैं तो delta t has certain finite value and if delta t has a certain certain finite value then delta E greater than or equal to H cross by delta T will give some finite width of the energy. The energy level will have certain width. And if energy level has got certain width, width, then we can say 
e is equal to h cross omega so that means delta e is equal to h cross delta omega that means there will be a width in the frequency that is we will not have a monochromatic radiation coming out of a laser light now let us see <clears throat> for the <clears throat> natural lifetime broadening generally and this equation we have seen earlier also rate of decrease of atoms in energy level 2 due to transition to energy level 1 is proportional to the number of atoms present per unit volume in that level with a negative sign that is dn2 dt is proportional to minus n2 and therefore dn2 dt is equal to minus a21 n2 and if you remember this was einstein's coefficient and a21 is given by 1 by t spontaneous where t spontaneous is the spontaneous lifetime so for every transition from level 2 to level 1 energy h cross omega is released hence energy released per unit time per unit volume will be given by if we multiply dn2 dt by h cross omega so wt is equal to mod dn2 dt into h cross omega and certainly dn2 dt we had minus a21 n2 and this we had seen in earlier classes that this n2 could be written as n20 e to the power of minus a21 into t so this would be a e to the power of minus a21 into t taken from expression 1 so wt can now be written finally as n20 a21 h cross omega e to the power of a21 into t so equation 2 describes the variation of intensity of a spontaneously emitted radiation so is tarah se spontaneous emission jo hoga uska jo intensity hoga us intensity ko expression 2 represent kar raha hai jaisa aap dekh sakte hain to iska corresponding agar hum electric field likhna chahe to electric field uske square root se hum likh sakte hain to e as a function of time could be written this e is associated with a spontaneous radiation given by expression 2 so et is equal to e not e to the power of i omega not t into e to the power of minus t by 2 t spontaneous mind it here t spontaneous is equal to 1 by a to 1 and intensity is proportional to a square of the electric field so we have now got as per expression 3 electric field associated with this spontaneous radiation as a function of time we need electric field as a function of frequency so to arrive at the expression for a spectrum associated with the electric field that is as a function of omega e as a function of omega let us make the fourier transform that is e omega is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity et e to the power of minus i omega t into dt is equal to e not exponential minus i omega not minus omega into t minus t upon 2t spontaneous dt so we have to take the integral of this particular function to have the spectrum in the, we have to have the uh, electric field as a function of omega so if we take out the integral it can be written as e omega is equal to e not 1 by 1 1 by 1 by 2 t spontaneous plus i omega minus omega not that is expression 4 so at t is equal to 0 here t is equal to 0 is a time when the atoms start emitting radiation that we had seen earlier also in this in the beginning also we have seen that at t is equal to 0 is the time when the atoms start emitting radiation so the power spectrum associated with this radiation will be proportional to e omega mod square actually and therefore if we take the square of expression 4 then we can write down the line function associated with this spontaneous emission or spontaneously emitted radiation then g omega can be written as all constants merged into one as k into 1 by omega minus omega not whole square plus 1 by 4 t spontaneous square now this t can be determined by the condition that g omega is normalized and we know that this line shape function is a normalized function integral g omega d omega is equal to 1 so 5 gives the uh, line shape function associated with the spontaneous emission in the spontaneous emission that we are just talking now substituting for g omega from 5 into 6 and then we if we integrate then k can be written as k equal to 1 by 2 pi t spontaneous thus the normalized function that the normalized line shape function g omega can be written as g omega is equal to 2 t spontaneous upon pi into 1 by 4 pi 
omega minus omega naught square t is spontaneous as well. Now, if we take care, look carefully at expression eight, then this represents a Lorentzian that we have already seen. So, function represented by eight, equation eight is known as Lorentzian, and it's full width at half maximum delta omega n is given as one by t spontaneous. So that is the story about the uh, line broadening mechanism because of uh, natural or lifetime broadening. So thank you very much for your kind attention. In the next class, we will cover the uh, line broadening mechanism because of the collisions among the atoms. So collision line broadening mechanism will be the next class coming up.